working on real world problems was just amazing and completely different from everything I was doing in my coursework. Both in our country and across the world, there is a large health disparity, and I want to help. I think there are some things in life that you do and you can't explain to anybody why you want to do it. My focus in international work has been in Haiti, and that started in 2010 after the earthquake. I look at the textiles industry in Ghana. So instead of taking what I see as the stereotypical approach towards development from a perspective of decline, I look at what is happening in terms of the growth of consumption. I volunteered for a U.S. nonprofit called Arrive, and I lived and worked at an orphanage in rural southwestern Kenya. I started teaching fifth grade math, sixth grade English, and seventh grade science. One of the 15-year-old boys, he didn't actually know how to read. He had memorized how words looked. We practiced reading. It took him like two days to master the entire alphabet. By the time I left, he was writing and reading. We are working in South India. We're setting up and about to start a year-long clinical trial. Right now it's known that at the cellular level, vitamin D boosts immunity, but we want to see if vitamin D supplementation can help cure TB faster. Because Haiti has a stigma against people with disabilities, especially after the earthquake, we wanted to create the schooling environment where people would be able to come together to sort of erase the stigma through education. As the project stands now, Centre d'Education Inclusive, which we abbreviate as CEI, and in English that means Center for Inclusive Education, we are working to allow kids to interact with one another with disabilities and physical and mental capabilities that might be able to teach each other. We spent one semester researching the need for housing in Nagarote, Nicaragua. We spent a semester designing, and then we went down and actually built the house so local families in the area can come in and see what kind of home they could build. It's all made of adobe bricks, all locally sourced materials, very energy efficient. You hear about some of the things that you'll face, but it's a whole different matter to experience them firsthand. It really gave me a lot of perspective. Just seeing the difference in resources that they have at their fingertips compared to what I have at my fingertips was shocking. It was such a step outside of my life for me. There are some pretty significant cultural differences. I think a lot about how complex our efforts to address poverty are. I think many of the poverty issues in the world have their crux in sustainability and resource management. Africa is a lot of times viewed as this place of dysfunction, disease, and deprivation. And I think there's a certain damage that happens with this long history we have of representing Africa in those ways. There are these contradictions. There's people who don't have enough to eat, but at the same time, they are proud of how they look. When you're working with people of all socioeconomic statuses, it's really important to keep in mind that that's not the defining factor of where you stand on Earth. It's really important to see the assets and the talents that already exist in places and to build those up. I never knew that I would be so interested and passionate about helping people everywhere. Passion is something that's driven internally and not consciously. My Cornell experience has really not only spurred that interest in me, but it just made me aware of a larger scope that my work could take and actually have a global impact. <laughs>